Hello there, welcome to Nomad Sweden again. This is Robert. Uh, I get a few questions now and then on all the types of gear that I'm using. So while the autumn storms are raging outside, I thought I um, walk you through all the stuff. I'm not happy with it, with everything. It's not the perfect setup. It's what I use. And so I give, give you the good and bad of, of all this gear. So stay tuned. So I use the layering principle when I ride, which means that I have separate protection uh, underneath uh, whatever I'm wearing. So I don't have uh, a motorcycle jacket with all the pads and everything in it. So that leads me to my number one garment, which is the Nox Urban Pro. It gives you protection on the shoulders, the elbows, the back. It's really good for a soft, for a soft kind of pad also. It's, it's really, it feels safe. The great thing about this jacket is that it's, um, it's a class A garment. Or <laughs> that's what it says. And that means that it, you can wear it as the only jacket when, when riding a motorbike. Because it's, uh, yeah, the, even though it's mesh kind of material, uh, you can still fall on it on the tarmac at speed and it will, uh, it will last. Second thing I wear every time I ride are my knee pads, of course. And these are from uh, a service. They are called Knee Guard Impact 3.0. And protection-wise, they do their job very well, of course. Um, but uh, in summertime, when I only have shorts underneath my riding pants, these go on my bare legs and they sort of, I get blisters from these joints here. They rub on my skin and um, after a few days, it's um, I'm start. <laughs> I actually bleed from from this. So I, I think I have some blood stains on this. So not very comfortable, but they are really nice. To uh, they are easy to get on. One, two, and three, and they are really bendable. I can. I, I don't feel hindered at all. Uh, doing the Indian squat. <laughs> um, no, so th they are really great in that sense. Yeah, so while we're at the things I wear all the time, it's time for the Alpine Stars Toucan boots. Um, as you can see, I've, I've used them for a while now. It's two seasons all year round. And they are great in many ways. Um, and the good things about them are that um, they are very comfortable. You can walk in them. They are warm in the winter. You can use them all year round without any special socks or anything. I've never frozen in these boots. And in the summer, of course, you get sweaty feet, but it's not unbearable. Uh, they are Gore-Tex boots, so they breathe uh, a little bit. And yeah, so, so I think you cannot get more comfortable all year round in one set of boots. Another thing which is great is that they are waterproof. So you can walk around in puddles and, and things like that. So, but as you can see, and it's, uh, it's waterproof up, up to this level then. Okie doke. I don't have the best underpants uh, for this. Fold it there. Velcro strap. And one, two. Great. There, one, two. Yeah, so they can be quite noisy if that's a problem for you when you walk into the store. But you can really walk nicely in them. Bad thing number two is that they are waterproof. 
uh, of course, that's a good thing up to a point where you get water in them and you do get water in, the, uh, water in them if you're doing a water passage or something like that. You, you, you get water up to your knees or whatever and yeah, they get really wet inside. And the bad part here is that they stay wet or, or damp and smelly for days after that. Yeah, so when we did that thing up north, I got water in them. Uh, it took me about three days to get them close to dry and they were really smelly. Uh, and yeah, after that. Because you cannot take an inner boot out. It's, it's all sewn into place and there's nothing to remove except for one small little, just uh, the foot part of the sole. You can take that out. Bad thing number three is that they can be a little bit soft. Uh, they are better than most adventure boots because they are flirting with the MX theme. They are sort of a hybrid uh, with all this. They're really good uh, protection wise. Um, but the sole uh, on, the, on the boots are, is a bit soft. So if you're standing a lot all day, you can, it's not a rigid platform that you're standing on like with MX boots. You can feel it a little bit through the, uh, through the foot pegs. But still, great boot. I love them. I use them every ride, all year round. Recommended. Ooh. It's getting hot in here. Okay, time for uh, the Liat. Uh, Liat GPX 5.5 Enduro jacket and pants. These are my favorites because let's put them on. Let's put them on. Let's get the boots on also. Okay, so they are over the boot. And let's take the jacket on also. Number one great thing with this kit is it's light. It's super light, super movable. Okay, so let's start from the bottom and go from the top. As mentioned, over the boot with, with Velcro. Inside knees are mocha, and they grab really good. And on the front, on the knees, we have some mini pads here, really. And it feels really sturdy. I'm not worried at any time that I may tear something or uh, like that. It's really well vented, so I can open up uh, on, on the thighs to let some air in and I also have pockets. Two front pockets, up here also pockets inside and ventilation. On the arms also uh, ventilation. You can remove the arms. On the back we have a pocket Mat pockets, never use it really because it's not that convenient. Besides the ventilation on the sides here, there's all, also this little pocket. This is intended to be used with a water bladder. So you can actually put a water bla bladder in the back of the jacket and you hook it up to uh, a little suspension system. So the weight does not just fall in the back of the jacket, but there are some, it feels like it's some, some lines or um, a real suspension system in here, because when you have the water bladder in the jacket, uh, you can feel that it's pulling like a small backpack inside the jacket. So it's really clever. I don't use that because it still feels weird and then I use a backpack instead. And the bad things aren't really bad things, I guess, really. Uh, but if you want water or wind protection, this does not uh, offer that. Love the Liat gear, really.
Okay, moving on. So, since the Liat gear was not waterproof and windproof and so on, I, I need separate rain gear. Um, so I was looking for a complete kit which would be light and uh, still be waterproof so that I don't have to stop and, and put uh, some rain gear on. So I fell for the... It's the Husqvarna Gotland Enduro Waterproof. Waterproof is even in the name of this uh, uh, model. Yeah, fits really good. Bad thing, number one, no pockets, not one single pocket. Um, since it is enduro gear, it's, yeah, I guess it, it's not aimed at adventuring and carrying a lot of stuff. This is also very light, but compared to the Lea, I feel a little bit more restricted in my movements. The whole purpose of this was to get a waterproof kit and it's not waterproof. I've been out in 10-15 minutes of rain riding and I'm wet underneath. So thinking about going a full adventure ride in a really shitty rainy day where it's pouring all day, you'll be wet underneath. They even put waterproof in the name and it's not doing its job. Bad thing number two, because it's, I guess, it's intended to be uh, uh, sort of a rainy day gear. It's not rugged at all. You have some extra, you have extra patch here on, on the elbows. That's good. But on the knees, you have nothing. Only the same fabric that you have everywhere else. So I even, after just a few days of, of use, I like to get down on perhaps one knee and spray the chain or whatever. I, I, I put the knee down sometime uh, and I started getting holes in the knees uh, part of, of, of the pants. So I've actually actually sewn on some extra fabric onto them. I wouldn't would not have bought it if I knew that it was not waterproof. So yeah. When it comes to Husqvarna gear, I, I've checked the non-waterproof versions of, of the same gear. Looks really nice, the same really nice blue and yellow Swedish theme and so on. And they look and feel really rugged and nice. So I'd rather go for the non-waterproof version. All right, so next up is the rain gear. I bought a cheap uh, rain gear from, doesn't matter, but it was cheap and I rode it and when you're on the bike, a lot of water gets uh, in your uh, groin area and, and a small puddle on the saddle just in front of you. So it's really important that the pants are really sealed and watertight in that part. So with the cheap pants, I got wet. So I decided to put the, the money in my pants, so to speak. I went for held. They, they are really light, really waterproof. Have a look inside my pants. I always wanted to say that, but if I show you, this is, this is the big opening and the groin area, if you see, look at all those taped seals. Uh, they really made an effort to not let any water in. This is the yoga part. Like so. And my rain jacket. I went into a local sports and outdoors store. Just bought myself a quite rubbery, really the sailors or whatever uh, rain jacket because th it's really nice to have uh, in, in the camp also when you're camping and when you're camping 
you want a hoodie and be like this. And I just bought the size. I went into the sports store and tried the jacket on with my riding gear on. So I bought enough size so that it also could uh, fit my riding gear underneath. And yeah, so I've ridden this rain kit and it's completely dry. It's been super. Oh! Okay, helmets. Let's start with this one. Uh, it's the Nex uh, XWED 2 helmet and I'm really pleased with this one. Uh, especially for the price, it was like, I think it was about 420 euros or something like that, that I paid for it. There are of course much more expensive helmets, but yeah, I do like this one. It has, um, it comes with a lot of stuff like uh, this beak and a beak extender. It has the visor. It also has the in, uh, sun visor in there. Um, okay, ventilation. Okay, so one thing that is both good and bad, but I th while you have this helmet, it's very nice that you have uh, the intercom module. It's a Senna device, but it's, it's sort of branded and adapted by Nex to fit exactly into, they made a slot for it here, so you don't have to, uh, you don't need this bulky thing on the side. Uh, some goggles are too big for the opening, but these are the 100% uh, st Strada, I think it is. Yeah, Strada. And they fit very nicely into this, and you can even close the visor with the goggles on. Downside with this helmet is the weight. It's uh, 1.6 kilos, 1,600 grams. And that's a bit on the heavy side. And then you add the GoPro here and things like that. So it's quite heavy and you feel it when you come to an intersection and you're quickly checking that way and that way you feel the swing weight of the helmet. This helmet I bought because it was so darn cheap. They, they let it out for, uh, I th thought, I, I think I paid 40, yeah, 40 euros for it. Answer, uh, our AR1 helmet. And I love this one. It's, it's not super light, it's 1300 uh, grams, uh, but it's very noticeable from, from the next helmet. So, I don't have an intercom or anything, so, and I don't have a visor, so, so if I'm not, if I don't need the intercom for my buddies, if I'm going on a solo ride somewhere and so, so on, and it's not going to pour down, I use this helmet because it's really comfortable, it's really, it lets air through uh, very nice, so it's a summer thing, a summer helmet. But yeah, so I got that one also. Yeah, so that's pretty much my gear walkthrough and I hope it helped you. If you were looking into purchasing uh, one of these items from, or yeah, looking, checking them out, then perhaps I've given you some reasons to do or not to do that. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. And as usual, ask questions, comment down below. Uh, like and subscribe please and if you want to see this gear in action check out these other videos that from our trips where is where we're using them of course so yeah see you in the next video thank you